A very good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Rohit, and I'm a research associate at Nusari Agriculture University. And uh, I have a given a topic on camera trap technology and tool and boon for wildlife management. Uh, so, starting with uh, this topic, the desire to observe undisturbed wildlife is uh, is a very you know very very keen in humans from uh, from early human era. So earlier. Uh, Humans used to watch wildlife from Machan. Now the wildlife photography has taken over this. And advancement in wildlife uh, photography tool, uh, really starting from large build camera to, to now the camera traps, has put the scientific understanding of the wildlife world, world in different aspects. So it was desire to watch undisturbed wildlife, which has cultivated in scientific understanding of wildlife world with advancing of technical uh, tools in photo wildlife photography. So coming to wild, history of wildlife photography, it was first Professor Gustav French's a German explorer who first photographed wild animal. And first flesh photographies was used by uh, William Nasbitt. And uh, it, it was a kind of uh, trap system where uh, if animal move, uh, move uh, break the uh, some kind of beam or something, which triggers the camera and flesh photo photography was coming to existence. Uh, and purely in scientific context, it was Frank M. Chapman who first started to distinguish in 1927 how animal can be, uh, you know, morphologically differentiated based on their coat pattern. And it was Sadek who carried out uh, their survey in rainforest mammals and identified uh, bush back leopards and rattle from their coat stripe patterns or different morphological features, and which also go go to estimate a crude density using these photographs. And it was. SETIG, which first used trail master camera traps to identify individual rat snakes. So it was not like the camera traps was uh, photography was very recently used. It has been used earlier, but it, in, a, in a very soft form of uh, context, like merely identifying individuals or looking at individual, how many species are there. But it was a seminal study of Ulas Karan, which changed the whole perspective of wildlife camera trapping because Ulas Karan linked this uh, uh, wildlife photography to the statistical modeling of population estimates which was earlier not done by any of the researchers which i stated earlier so it was this study who changed the pattern of wildlife photography so if you look at the camera trap the camera trap can be differentiated based on their property of trigger in presence of animal so historically it was pressure pad so you put pressure pad in front of camera trap any animal moves in front of camera trap and uh, the pressure pad get pushed and some trigger was there which like start the camera trap then there was active infrared so this this picture is from oceans 11 12 when a thief used to steal something and he's crossing laser infrared similarly these active infrared plays uh, a role there was a laser beam which animal cuts down and uh, camera trap trigger the photographs and recent modern photographs are uh, are used by passive infrared uh, which 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 capture the infrared from any object which is Moving, moving in front of the camera trap. So it's a kind of moving heat detection motion camera traps. So these passive infrared camera traps have two pyroelectric sensors, which the which have property to uh, differentiate in between electric currents and a fractional lens, which put infrared radiations onto the uh, pyroelectric sensors. So this is the elephant, and it has some you know infrared and background temperature is very different. So these two differences create has uh, for example this elephant pictures in the slide has given a different infrared radiation than compared to the uh, surface uh, 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 behind the elephant so this difference is captured by the pyroelectric sensor the sensors which triggers the camera trap for the flash photography so it was it was the difference in surface temperature and the moving object temp infrared temperature which captured by the camera trap so uh, these this this is what how a modern camera trap works so this is a one of the camera trap model reconnex so they 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 more of the most of the whole camera traps have more or less similar features like infrared flash rate walking test camera lens day night sensor and infrared sensor so the, uh, other other camera trap models also have same features some are more efficient and some are less efficient just that so scientific use of camera traps can be started with research question and hypothesis because camera trap is a tool. It's, it's, it's just like a tractor in agriculture field, which cannot do anything on its own until you don't know how to you know, use it. So camera traps, until you don't know what are your research question and hypothesis, it is very difficult to put camera traps in 
you know use of camera traps you would end up, end up with merely good photographs or some bad photographs which is followed by sampling design since you are dealing with moving object in front of camera traps which might be rare which might be abundant so the role of sampling design is very important in camera trap studies and field interpretation data collection of course for the larger projects which have hu humongous amount of data set and they should be managed uh, very efficiently because they are technical data and they, they can be lost and uh, recovering these data sets are really difficult and then definitely analysis and test of the hypothesis what you post so there are the camera traps can be used for different uh, uh, research question could be related to species presence absence species relative abundances distribution and habitat use species population parameters species richness activity pattern interaction among sympatric species and there are multiple uses of camera trap so definitely camera traps are related to research question what you pose i am again saying this this is very important rather than merely putting camera traps in field so so coming down to species presence absence this is the most simple use of camera traps when you put a camera trap you had got captures and end up with few species which are present at your backyard on some forest and some other areas for example this i we have carried out a camera trap survey in upsari agriculture university and we have got leopards uh, golden jackal feral cats hares and these camera traps are merely put by our undergraduate student so uh, a layman can put camera traps if he knows how to operate it in his backyard and catch species which are existing Uh, they are at different places so this is the one of the most simple is use of camera traps the relative abundance index is the another property of camera trap which can be assessed so this uh, this question deals with how one species is more abundant than another species since it is a index it rely it relies on the assumption that the relative index of any species is linearly related to its densities so what used what we have to do in uh, relative assessing relative abundance is to segregate picture in the independent form so that should not be relate temporally uh, uh, so one one can have photographs at a certain time interval distances like 30 minutes or 20 minutes so they are independent and uh, these independent pictures are divided by trap nights generally one trap nights are 24 hours and divided multiplied by 100 so this gives you a kind of uh, uh, If if a, a numerical figure which are relative abundance of different species, but relative abundance needs to be cautioned because many times you doesn't you the, these uh, these indexes not not linearly relate to the actual population estimates and also depends on the body size. If animal is larger in body size, then definitely it has more energetic requirements and move in front of camera traps and have more capture than a smaller animal. And also on season because in different season uh, resource availability change and animal movement can change. which can you know affect the encounter rates of camera trap in for in the in 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 any habitat so definitely these are the two most important things which need to be cautioned while assessing the relative abundance index from the camera trap the third are the population parameters which can be minimum number alive how much individuals are there densities abundance sex ratio survival safe dispersal reproductive rates and turnover rates so uh, so these population care parameters can be uh, assessed from two different kind of species one species which can be identified from the coat pattern like tiger have stripes leopards have spots and hyena have stripes mouse deer have stripes and species which doesn't have a unique coat pattern like uh, <coughs> palm civets golden jackal fox etc so the species which have unique coat pattern the methods are minimum number alive conventional capture recapture and especially explicit capture recapture for the species who doesn't have unique coat pattern this or this can also include the species also have a, a unique coat pattern uh, are early colonist models and mixture models unmarked ssr random encounter model and camera trap based distance sampling so these are the method, methods which can be used from camera uh, from camera trap data uh, while assessing the density and abundance of the species so minimum number alive is a very simple form of uh, uh, analyzing the data when you assess the unique number of tiger from their pattern in a unique number of leopards unique number of hyena uh, i mean how much uh, different tigers are there different leopards are there in hyena in there and put the numbers so this is the kind of conservative figures that this much uh, this much number of uh, animals are there and you can have true density by dividing the number of uh, area so but but it, it doesn't put any statistical constraint on the uh, you know assessing techniques using uh, camera traps uh, so this has been used prior to last current studies many times and sometimes it also used for the very small sample size when you cannot run sophisticated statistical models so this 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 analysis can be used efficiently at those times 
so coming to conventional capture recapture as i said density uh, from uh, you know uh, uh, minimum number alive can be assessed by dividing their number into area so numbers are unique individual you have got but this raise and question do we have counted all the individual because we have constraint to put camera traps we have countries to got them we have constraint to you know sampling the area so this 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 led to a question if we have counted all the individual using camera trap then there is no need to go for statistical jargon or statistical modeling since you have already counted all if not then how many are there which you are not able to count so these are called as ghost individual in camera trapping so this this led to the probability framework that what is the probability of you know capturing an individual this this changed the entire scenario of camera trapping and it this leads to estimate that number in in an area could be their uh, you know in the unique individual divided by their probability so this 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 has a start a start up of uh, you camera assessing uh, populations from camera trap using uh, using statistical models and conventional capture capture have uh, two assumptions demographic closure like uh, there will be no deaths and no breaths uh, births when you are carrying out camera trapping and every individual have unique probability of capture so there will be no holes when you put camera trap every individual should be captured so camera trap denseness yeah inter camera trap spacing should be related to your species home range less than the species home ranges so these probability which i earlier state can be probability of you know uh, counting an in unique individual can be assessed by four models so, you know uh, null models which say there is no uh, constraint on probability all individual will capture the same probability which states that you will get more or less number of same unique individual and since there is no constraint constraint of probability then temporal model which states that at every sampling location has different probability of capture then uh, behavior model which states that once a species captured at first time it will avoid or you know attract towards camera trap for example leopards there are studies who said that leopards and tigers used to avoid camera trap after their first capture due to their due to you know flash or other other things and the last model which is very important is heterogeneity model which states that every individual have its unique uh, unique capture probability specifically for large carnivores so this this model has changed the scenario of calculating uh, uh, abundance from camera trapping and the uh, area calculation in uh, conventional capture recapture is through half of the mean maximum distance from so you have individual which move among the camera trap maximum and you mean their distances and then half and then similar area full but this is a kind of ad hoc approach because you are not dealing with explicitly with space use you are merely you know giving some index of their movement which depend upon camera trap since if you have more camera trap you will get more location you have less camera trap you will get less locations and this will affect your density estimates so uh, the the convention capture recapture has very restricted uh, very constraint while assessing the density of a species for abundance uh, these models are okay and the sampling requirement the studies have said that uh, at least four uh, four times of the home range of a species which uh, should be surveyed Uh, so but but it depends upon your uh, you know different ecological settings number of individual presence there and other stuff so it should be not it should not taken very objectively uh, so there are statistical ways to assess amount of sample size you required so this is a simple data entry format of uh, conventional capture recapture you have individual you have sampling occasion uh, so this sampling occasion is like i if i have first 5 days is first sampling occasion for or camera traps if i have put Uh, 10 camera traps for, uh, for 45 days so my first camp sampling location of is of 5 days so 5 5 45 days and five day, first five days for all camera trap then second five days then third five days and then you have to get in unique individual like leopard one was captured at first sampling location not captured at second then at third not captured at fourth so this this will help in analysis of yeah, analysis of data using pro program mark uh, which which is a value driven program Uh, for the analysis of conversion capture recapture now coming to specifically explicit capture recapture which is which which has uh, which has deal with spatial information explicitly since the conversion capture recapture as i said ad hoc methods were used to assess the space use so this 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 model use individual location of camera trap for the analysis and this is depend upon the kind of point process model for example you have trees in the forest you have birds if you have their gps location you can you know assess the cluster of trees distribution in a forest but for individual when you put camera traps you cannot have actual gps location of the individual you have kind of thin or kind of false kind of kind of less gps location which which are uh, you are taking in front of camera trap 
so this generator can a process known as point cluster process which you have which you have different number of cluster at different location for example this blue circle first blue circle have four or five location uh, which indicate that a camera trap when you have larger animal sighting will indicate its activity center so the activity center or home range center where individual is living most in layman terms where it is founding most have maximum number of location right and when individual is moving away from its activity center then these uh, these location are getting down so it's a kind of uh, you know assessing these activity centers number through poison poison, uh, poison cluster process which gives rise to density estimate so a simple density formula in explicit explicit capture recapture is number of an area number is number of individual activity center which i have said and as is area of a state space so how much all activity center covers the space is the space calculated using especially explicit capture recapture which was not there in conventional capture recapture so density is the number of individual activity center located located in a prescribed state so this is the basic framework for special explicit capture recapture and assumption are each animal has an activity center which i said which used to decrease while going away from the activity center and capture probability in front of a camera trap is a function of distance between activity center and camera trap so going away from the camera trap your capture probability increases near the camera trap you have high capture probability if an animal activity center is there so field protocols are you can place camera trap on trails roads and idea is to get unique individual and get more special recaptures in contrary with conventional capture recapture and different stat sampling strategies like cluster random or systematic can be used to assess uh, sscr estimates and to assess area size there has been a package developed by SS, named as sscr design which consider uh, the camera trap spacing and they give you uh, uh, population estimate uh, uh, based on simulation so that can tell you how much you know precision you need based on your camera trap spacing so this is the blue figure the second figure is my uh, leopards population estimates from gear which indicate that how leopards are captured at different camera traps so this is how sccr basic sccr works the, and data entry format for basic sccr is there are two files in contrary with conventional sccr capture file and trap file capture file for example session is gear if you have a different session you can put different uh, you know places then individual id is number of unique leopards you have identified then sampling question in contrary to uh, 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 conventional mark capture you i have used uh, one day sampling location based on earlier studies on leopard in gear and then trap id so first i for the trap file you are looking at you have to give first trap id with their gps location and then you have to put that trap id in capture file and also you can add covariates in that like, like sex and habitat features and other variables which can affect the detection probability of individual individual and there are program density in in not our program density is a manual you know manual run program and package sccr is there in r which used to estimate population density using these files the next is royal economics metrogenity model and n mixture models this model optimize the uh, uh, different abundance at different sites for example if you consider this table as a site then you have numbers so these are different abundance and where there are more abundance you have more captures of species in any site and less abundance less capture of species and that way this will give provides this will provides you population estimate but the population estimates of uh, royal and collas heterogeneity model and n mixture models are merely limited to their sites rather than for a area so you have to extrapolate estimates to a certain grid or certain area you have uh, you have camera trap deployed camera traps which 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 cannot you know explicitly uh, extrapolate it for a certain area so assumption are closer of site during a survey you have a study area you divide it in grid so closer would be no species should, should move in between the grids so grid uh, technically the grid site should be larger than the home range of a species equal detection probability for all individual and no false detection and sampling consideration as i said site should be larger than the home range of species so that this closure assumption can be as you you know should not be violated uh, but for uh, the and royal nicolas heterogeneity model consider one zero data you have five cam one camera trap and you get presence absence data while n mixture model consider count data so one zero data can be reached to asymptote when you have high abundances like you have very high abundances then you will every time you will get one 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 not a single zero but uh, so at that time n mixture model which used to count at a certain certain sample equation should be used so the package unmark can be used for their analysis Uh, uh, using an Royal Nicolas model and had three n-mixture models. 
So another is random encounter model. Random encounter model. This is the random encounter model. Random encounter model evolved. Okay, thank you. So random encounter model has been evolved from the kind of a mechanistic model where gas molecules used to encounter with certain objects. So it it assumed the place principle that gas was therefore it needs a specific camera trap so that every encounter of a species moving in front of camera trap should be captured with a minimized delay, and the individual represent an in content uh, uh, animal and camera traps, and it is a very labor intensive methods which you know which you need to have how camera trap when a species entering in frame of the camera traps when it is moving. And also movement rates of the species. Movement rates you can get from literature. And if you look at the screen, there is a one white, different white, and red, uh, white and black poles is there in uh, pictures. So you have to calibrate that data uh, at different meter, three meter, and how uh, and integrate that data with the species captured in camera traps. So it's a very labor intensive and computation intensive methods. And it also required very high end camera traps to. Uh... You know, perform in the fields. So especially explicit capture capture unique individual, you merely have activity centers of individuals and uh, you calculate it, uh, one. Uh, this method calculate density from these activity center. So how activity center would be generated when you have one individual captures triple camera traps. So you have to have uh, multiple camera traps in individual home ranges rather than one camera traps in single home ranges in contrary to other models. And density is highly in a you know your camera trap array. If you put less camera traps, you will have get less captures and less activity center will be affected. More camera traps, you had fine level of data, but it, it should be a trade-off of your you know amount of camera traps you have. Now, the third last is the camera trap based distance sampling. This this technique has totally changed the methods of sampling abundance, and it's a it's an extension of uh, basic sam distance sampling, which we use point count method. In point count method, you use to see and count the birds or another trap, which used direct sighting and calculate the density. So uh, uh, the most special camera uh, density sampling, uh, if you are surveying a species which is nocturnal or crespicular for example, summer, you, you, you assume that you are getting every, uh, you, you are assuming that you are getting every encounter of a species that is active, but it is actually not true. Your species might be active for a certain fraction of time and you will not getting uh, encounter of all the species, but camera type distance sampling consider that time into consideration while assessing the densities. So if the camera traps covers an angle theta radians and describe the fraction of circle covered by camera trap. So the overall area of camera trap at certain point count is uh, theta, the radian of the camera traps and the circle is complete. So uh, The, the data to each uh, uh, distances uh, uh, and then calibrate it with the uh, cam camera trap captured images. So, density estimates of uh, this camera trap just sampling can be divided into to, uh, these two. The, the upper half indicates the number of observations in a camera trap, and the second is sampling area and detection probability. So, this TK is a very new incorporated things in, in camera trap distance sampling. And uh, of course, there are earlier things also like W, which is a truncated distance, and uh, you have to truncate distance like uh, conventional camera traps. So, this is a very important technique which has revolutionized the field of abundance estimation. Camera trap placement. This is the marmot study. You have pegs at different certain intervals, so you know actual how much distance marmot has crossed the camera traps, and you wish to know theta, which can be known by the field of view. So you have to manually calibrate it, entering on the both side of camera trap, uh, camera trap, and then use animal images for uh, calibrating 
or your information with calibrating animal images and then calculate the densities. So distance have in built, uh, you know, camera drive distance sampling analysis feature, this 7.2. And this can also be used from uh, unmarked package uh, in R analysis. And other use of camera trap as to assess reproduction potential, like first years of reproduction, what is the litter size, interbirth intervals, for example, for tigers in the, uh, they put camera, but this camera trap for seven or eight years and assess the interval of tigers for 33 months and mean litter size for 2.3 and dispersal distances. But uh, camera trap can give you first phase of dispersal. Uh, only uh, how much animal have traveled for example if capture in first camera trap when capture the second camera trap other place then you can give your distribution distances and then vital rates for example survival rates reproductive rates recruitment rate, rather than two or month three months of uh, camera trapping so it needs about you know around the seven eight or a decade placements of camera trapping field and another species distribution, most simple or their relative abundance plot on map. For example, this may map of here indicates uh, relative abundance of rusty spotted cat. So the larger black dots indicate more capture of rusty spotted cat and smaller fewer capture of uh, rusty spotted cat. So this kind of map can be prepared. You can also prepare uh, intensity map. For example, blue uh, blue color in this map indicates high use zones. And red color indicates no user, and there are more advanced statistical models like Max and which based on presence only data, and then the extension of generalized real model used to assess distribution of a species. And of course, occupancy using camera trap data uh, assess distribution of a species. And other is the habitat use. So habitat in habitat is of framework has regulation regularized this field. So occupancy data depend upon zero one. Uh, Presence absence data where absent species have detected where zero have high uh, zero have less detection probability than one and one have uh, total detection probability and the sites are one two, one two no. and you can relate detection probability in occupancy with the habitat features like tree cover cover extra or when you when and this these habitat features if affecting the density of a, a crucial habitat parameters which are affecting space use of a species in this way uh, habitat you and you are changing it to sampling location and presence of data and then you will add covariates on it and definitely end up with a, some para factors which are affecting uh, habitat use of the any species which is under study. And you can also generate this kind of map. Uh, this is the, the occupancy map of a leopard distribution in Napsari district we have generated. So dark, dark color indicate high intensity use and indicate low intensity use. So uh, apart from that, camera traps also used to assess multi-scale habitat use. You can put circle. Uh, which is related to uh, animal movement, for example, of two meter radius, three meter radius, ten meter radius, and then you can extract variables and you can assess at which at which scale animal habitat use was getting affected. And also, in a simple term, apart from occupancy, you can have independent captures along with this data at different scale or at a site specific scale. And then you can model it. You uh, you know generalized linear models or uh, generalized or generalized linear mixed model which can give you a relationship between independent captures, capture of a species and its covariates. Like this is the predictive occupancy probability using array in the goodness. So this kind of uh, maps can be generated and this kind of analysis can be done using camera tracking data. Another is the species richness, how much number of species you get and you use and this the species richness. But occupancy framework has also used to assess predict species richness, which use uh, presence absent data of a species at a certain uh, camera trap site. And use covariates to predict the species richness. 
test at a site and package uh, uh, package uh, taken it from their their paper and the, for example the how the predatory species richness of birds reptiles amphibians are varying and data format for this uh, uh, species richness is very simple you have grid id where you plate camera traps and this br dr dr species at the 293 number camera traps you had five species among which one species was captured one was captured then again not captured Capture. So in this way, you can model species richness using camera traps. Another use is you can use activity pattern data using camera traps. Since camera trap also record uh, you know time time stamps while capturing the images. So these time data can be used to assess activity pattern of species in a very simple way. You can put uh, uh, you know number of captures in front of uh, hours, and you can map it using a histogram like this when a species are active for example this is some species are active hypothetically between 3 a.m to 5 a.m then number of captures in front of hours put a constraint if you decrease the hour for example half hour 15 minutes this will definitely change the uh, change your results so case so after ch changing it in a circular radiance and you can plot it using uh, software like Oriana. This this black uh, this dial type graph is of activity pattern generated from Oriana. And recently, specific analysis for camera trap has been developed using R package Unmark, where you can have uh, where you, where activity pattern is changed into density kernel and set it on uh, plot it using Unmark package and look at the house species was active during different time for example this data was of leopard hyena from rajaji and uh, leopards were very diurnal and hyena was very nocturnal so in this way you can one can use uh, an uh, activity pattern among the species so when you have captures from camera traps you can simply relate using correlation regression for example this is a early correlation between leopard and tiger which is not significant, which indicates that they, they, they might be using uh, hours independently. And the second indi second is the uh, linear relationship, uh, linear regression graph between which I have generated from Nafsadi Agriculture University data uh, between feral cats and Indian hair. So there is a strong linear relationship between uh, feral cat space use and Indian hair space use, which, which one can, you know, one can state that, okay, there will be high encounter of uh, chance of encounter when between in feral cats and in Indian hair. And which which can cause conservation concern to Indian hair through predation, since large encounters can change into predation. So so definitely you can use you can put your different research questions and you can you can you can interpret data in that way. And this data can also extend it to use of mammalian assemblage, how mammals are arranged spatially using co-occurrence model, which are there in R, or using occupancy model among interaction of a species. Is one species avoiding another, or another is first, a species is avoiding B, or B species is avoiding C. So you can you can use it according to your research question, what what you wish to frame and what you wish to put out from the camera trap data. Other uses are there then monitoring. You can put camera traps on den, you can monitor their activity, pop trading, etc. Then nest monitoring, like of, for birds, and also for nest predation of birds. And another important thing is carcass monitoring. So uh, how much a large carnivore like leopard kill is providing you know food to other species and how this nutrition cycling is going on can be monitored through camera trap by putting camera trap and recording video of species and also interactions on these carcass how they are happening how species are segregating themselves so uh, this is another field so uh, so general concentration uh, while camera trap deployment apart from uh, sampling specific condition consideration are Consider ecology of species while deployment. For example, if I use to assess leopard abundance, and def then definitely I'll put camera traps on trails and roads since they highly use roads. Or some species, if specifically using uh, some terrain, then you can put camera traps to maximize the captures. Of course, clear vegetation in front of the camera vegetation moves. Then you have uh, different spatial signatures, and uh, and then camera trap will capture numerous amount of images, which will fill out your uh, data. Uh, your capture in front of camera trap if, if a species start avoiding the camera traps and then camera trap height and it, it's checking so camera trap height studies have mentioned that should be mounted between 35 to 40 centimeter which which you know capture a range of species 
and prior to leave camera trap uh, the functioning should be checked properly because uh, camera trap co collect a large amount of data if time is wrong then definitely you will end up with having no time data and should be checked regularly for functioning like uh, for battery replacement and other other things it, it depends upon how much time and how much uh, camera trap placements you have if you have large number of camera trap you cannot you know check them da daily basis and so therefore it depends upon you how you wish to organize that uh, camera trap checking and downloading of data and at last camera traps uh, camera traps it should be used in relation to their your research question what research question you wish you would to uh, answer if you cannot if you don't have research question you will merely end up with some beautiful pictures or some white flesh picture or some other stuff uh, which, which which will mean nothing apart from you know uh, exciting images and okay so i cannot end this presentation without uh, mentioning these two projects project tiger in india which has whole guinness book of world record of present you know deploying camera traps and which an indian can definitely proud of and and also another project is snapshot serengeti which is uh, which is working from 2010 and continuously collecting the data versus species interactions so i believe these two projects are among the you know important projects using camera traps to monitor the uh, range of fauna or large carnivore or other. and with i wish to thank to professor jamali khan chairman of the department of wildlife sciences for providing me this opportunity to speak and dr nazan her organizing secretary of the uh, this workshop and professor jamali khan also my good thanks a lot sir thanks thanks everyone